Man, I gotta be careful what I wish for. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks a ton for tuning back in. This is Ian here coming at you for a review for Legion Season 2. That's Episode 9, Chapter 17, a.k.a. Rewind. Cut it back. So you might remember I was just talking uh, last, my last review that I kind of wish I knew more about the whole Melanie thing. Well, I get it in spades here. We all do. So before I jump into that, as always, spoiler territory ahead. If you're waiting to check this out on some kind of other outlet or you're just waiting for episodes to stack up, run the season finale all at once, you've been warned. Otherwise, we're getting right into this one. So uh, right up top at the start of the episode, we're back where we were near the uh, end of the last where Melanie completely waylays Clark in the hall and drags his body off and instantly wondered, all right, well, here it is. Uh, this is the Shadow King counter, active counter to David uh, actually going as low as to use some of his own friends against him. And of course, uh, in what a way to, naturally as we know, Melanie has a massive soft spot, I guess you could call a love-hate relationship at this point for Oliver, for his on-again, off-again antics, disappearing to the astral plane, reappearing when he chooses to, uh, this time, of course, under the influence of the Shadow King himself. But uh, this is really an exposition episode, and unlike the last time we launched into one of these, um, that was with uh, David, what could have been, you might remember the episode I really didn't like, I, to I could tolerate this one a bit better. I'm just going to go right up front and say that I give this one about a, uh, about a 6 out of 10. I'm going to tell you why, of course. But uh, the reason this one is tolerable is because following a trend that we saw last episode, giving us a bit more um, of presence, some presence of characters who've been largely sidelined uh, this season is always something refreshing. And uh, unlike the episode with David, I felt this worked a lot more uh, with the story. We had active progress happening from the events that transpired last episode and the history, the, the peaks we got into Melanie's past really helped shed some light on some stuff we have here. So uh, the, you, you may have noticed as we've been going through this story, Melanie's just sort of been left to her own devices after the, uh, the idea uh, implantation after she got her own uh, goop chicken in her head. <laughs> and when David subsequently uh, freed her, and uh, delved into her mind. We haven't heard a whole, a whole lot more. She had some conversations with Sid that uh, never really were revealed in, in all their detail, but we have them here. Uh, and we see what Melanie was doing behind the scenes this whole time. Uh, part of that was getting high. Really, really high. Um, but uh, it definitely was, it wasn't all fun and games. She really went into a bit of a stupor, uh, almost a partially... Uh, uh, a hallucin hallucinogenic state and uh it was things are really dicey for her uh for a bit it, it, we, we've come to find out that oliver visits her um she keeps a loaded gun uh near bed and she tries to hold his projection at uh gunpoint but oliver manages to just start tracking back through their past uh going over their own uh, history and of course uh with melanie still having her uh, soft spot. She listens to Oliver hook line and sinker. And it turns out as she's feeding him information on David's movement, on David's plans, uh, we now have a little bit of insight into sort of how the Shadow King's trying to keep tabs on all of this stuff at once. So we know Melanie has let the Shadow King know at this point that David attempted to come intercept him alone. She also let him know that David left a note for Sid, but that's all she is able to go off of. They still don't seem to have a full bead on uh, his total plan, nor the, um, the the reasons why he sent for everyone else. But uh, we, as the audience, get that. Uh, so I want to veer away from uh, Melanie one second uh, to look at uh, Lenny. As she promised, uh, Lenny was going to go nuts when she got out. She was going to live, live like she never lived before. She ends up making her way back to the drug house she went to before she got pulled into the asylum. You noticing a the theme with drugs this episode? Yeah, getting high. I don't know. She makes it back. She's quickly recognized by some of her other friends. They throw an insane party. Uh, she just just goes completely bonkers. 
uh, smokes, snorts, who knows what else. <laughs> uh, we we only really saw the smoking the party and whatnot, but it's 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 Lenny, so we <laughs> you can't. There's not much you can put past her at this point. Um, interestingly enough, though, Lenny doesn't seem to be in full control of her body. That is David's sister still making her presence known here. Now, as you know, Lenny is sort of overwritten herself on top of David's sister's body. And of course, not by her own choice. But David's sister pays a visit uh, to her in terms of what seems like a, a, a projection or almost like a, a, a mental uh, fragment of some sort. But she's fully sentient, able to reach out, able to talk to Lenny specifically. And at first she asks for her body back. Of course, Lenny says, look, I don't know how any idea. I'm sorry about this. I don't know how to do that. You know, look, you're, you're struck. You just you hang out with me or you can just go away. Uh, and of course, she's not going to have any of that. And it looks like that David's sister still determined to help him from the beyond. So she sort of functions as the guide here to sort of guide Lenny into these visions she keeps seeing about the ideas or the images that David put in her head about where she needed her to be and what she needed her to pick up, which ties right into Carrie and Carrie. Of course, I mean, uh, Carrie Loudermilk and his uh, fighting protege, his other half. So Carrie was meant to deliver a weapon. We don't know what kind of weapon yet. We, we've seen little snippets and it's some sort of rifle, some sort of sniper rifle. I have no idea what it's about. But they were to deliver this weapon to a restaurant parking lot of some sort. Um, I think the electric octopus is the call word. Even though that, that's not the name of the place. That's what everybody's calling it, so I'm going to run with that. I'm going to love it. They make the delivery, and they wait, and eventually Lenny is persuaded to make her way here as well. She thinks this place is far off or in Switzerland or something, but uh, she realizes it's, well, conveniently right across the street. So she makes her way over, and once she reaches this uh, car that Carrie leaves in the parking lot with the weapon in the trunk, uh, Lenny gets in, realizes there's no key, but soon gets translocated. The whole car and all warped straight out into the desert by, we assume, none other than David. So she's there now. She's got the weapon. And I'm not too sure what's going to be your timing for using this. I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that she was placed in an area, hopefully near the actual monastery, if David even has a clue how to get to that yet. Uh, to post and await the Shadow King, because the, the slices of this we've seen, um, and this is bugging me out a bit. She's in position with, uh, in the visions at least, like in, like with the sniper rifle. But the Minotaur from Melanie's psyche has manifested itself somehow, and it's creeping up on Lenny. So I'm not really too sure how that's going to work. What we do know right now is, is Lenny has become very malleable. She seems to be under direct influence of Oliver slash Shadow King. Uh, but to what end? As we know, uh, Oliver made a direct threat many episodes ago that he was going to just straight out kill uh, the Shadow King, that there was still something he was overlooking. And we've not seen that come to fruition yet or how that's going to play out. So um, one thing we've learned about the show so far, nothing, nothing is what it seems. So you can't take it all at face value, if you want to call that <laughs> face value for an acid trip <laughs> that this show actually is. But um, I've learned to really be on guard, and I'm sure a lot of you uh, have as well. So we've got the foundations for a plan here. We see it about to assemble. Um, the I'm assuming this is all going to go down as the Shadow King attempts to get a hold of his body. But uh, in terms of the uh, the exposition we get here, besides the all the development and getting all the pieces in place for the last few episodes here, uh, you know, again, there's there's some really important stuff that I like. Uh, this idea of Melanie sort of being discarded, uh, really left behind. She has this line about the two saddest words in the English language being vacant lot, with emphasis on vacant. This kind of goes back to an early conversation she had with Sid. 13 days ago, as we're putting time context with that. So, this idea that Oliver, people like Oliver, people like um, David, extremely powerful, extremely important mutants like this, always have somewhere to go, always have something to do. And 
it's not her place to interfere with that. It's not her place to get in the way. And she even says to Sid, you know, I, you know, what would we be if we, if we got in the way of that, of, of their, of their destiny, there's almost kind of like some kind of jealousy uh, from her here. And I want to say that jealousy stems from whatever Oliver was always off doing, whatever the things people like, you know, powerful people like David go off to do the other people in their lives getting minimized. In Melanie's case, her relationship with Oliver, her, her needs, her wants, everything about her getting minimized in the face of Oliver's dream. Now, she was okay with this in the past. And if you remember in the a few episodes ago when David freed her mind, she goes over the whole story about how she was a girl without a dream, but her dream became Oliver's dream to found what they, what they did find together. Uh, to create a place for mutants, which they did. But in the same hand, as Melanie's become more reflective, she's realized a lot of what she's wanted just kind of become run over in the face of what Oliver's after. And, and here we have Oliver again, conveniently appearing, well, when he needs her. So uh, we, we get to see all this from a different perspective, from, I think, the characters who don't always have a chance to have the big impact, always have a chance to do the world-shaking things. Uh, this is an example of those who were kind of just left in the in the, the background, left in the dust, and, and what do they do with that? And uh, Melanie struggled a lot, uh, just with with uh, with the near psychosis um, in those earlier days. Uh, Carrie attempted to get her to come back to work, but clearly seeing she was unstable, just left her be. Uh, this shows the damage. I, I think that did. You know, everyone sort of left Melanie to her own devices, and I think not really keeping close tabs on her obviously left room for her to get influenced and this really went under everyone's radar so now that she's not clark out man um this is this is likely going to be some kind of wrench in in david's plan uh the question is how deep though uh that that we don't don't we actually don't know yet um but if you're looking for an episode uh an expose episode looks back in the past this is the episode in this season that i think did it best and uh, I actually uh, appreciated that. And again, uh, did not feel out of place, went well. Uh, nothing uh, in particular here big with sound or big with uh, visuals, uh, particularly cutting here. Interestingly enough, uh, in, in, in terms of what we have for production value and everything, uh, we didn't get anything else on the ideas or this whole delusion talk we've had the, the whole time. These have been the lead-ins to some episodes. These have been placed at the end of other episodes that we have one at the end of last episode but not here uh this these are more signs that uh this is it we're we're playing the last few innings here so we don't have very long left we got a couple more episodes i am still excited to see this still excited to see how everything turns out or if i have just missed the boat completely or who knows maybe we all have so Hey, we'd love to hear what you guys think. Please leave a comment below or give us an email. That's ksawmedia at gmail.com. Till then, stay tuned to our channel for regular reviews, movie reviews, and of course, our weekly show. Take it easy and have a good one. Hey, people. Thank you for tuning into this episode and taking a listen. Uh, if you like our content, if you like what you're listening to, there anything we go over, hey, please, we would not only love to hear more from you, but if great, you could throw some support. You can subscribe right below. Also, you can toss us a line anytime. That's caseonmedia at gmail.com. Uh, of course, you can tune in for our channel anytime for movie reviews, game reviews, uh, a lot of random wacky stuff. Yet, who knows what you'll hear? And of course, our, our episode each week where we're bringing the nerdiest things we can find, dig up, and uh, maybe not find, maybe the stuff that just drops in our laps. But uh, anyway, hey, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening. And we hope to hear from you again later. Take care.